Yeah, good morning, everybody. I hope um, it seems like most of you were finishing up the reboot character just fine. A couple of you have had a couple of glitches, but um, for the most part, they look pretty good. Um, I want to continue with uh, multiply tools today and, um, you know, give you more tools to work with for your toy assignment and your final assignment. And um, we'll probably move on to Boolean modeling, which is under the construct tab um, when I get done with these. So just starting with a basic box here. Um, where we left off, some of the tools that we could use maybe is the mirror tool. So as I select mirror, and I go ahead and I activate, okay, by default, um, it could be along the X, Y, or Z axis. And you'll notice the little orange widget here. And then as I move it across, you know that it can mirror across the X axis, the Y, Okay, so if I do that and we zoom out a little bit and I move that up, oops, let's go back to Y. Uh, try to click on it. Oh, come on. Uh, why am I giving you fit? Why are you giving me fits here? Let's move that up. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, let me move it along the y-axis. There we go. So that just allows me, it's basically like a clone tool. And generally, um, here, let me undo this again. And let me just hit T for move. And um, for the most part, it's, you know, you're going to, to mirror something along the x, y, or z axis. Those are your three options. That's it. So if I go ahead here and I turn off move and I moved it to the right of the center axis for the Y. And now if I select mirror and I go ahead and I um, activate and I do it along, well, there's the Y axis, but now if I do it along the X, notice that it uses that center Y is the pivot point. And likewise, you know, if you use the X, the Y or the Z, it will do the same. So we've used it once before. You can also click here. Um, let me go ahead and turn that off. Let's undo. And let's mirror along the X axis. One. How about the Y? There we go. So I'm doing along the Y and I've activated and you can make adjustments accordingly. So that's the mirror tool. We worked with the array tool the other day. Um, the next thing that I wanna show you though is the knife tool. So a knife tool can be a useful tool. It's a way of adding geometry and it's just, you cut all the way through. Um, so you'll notice in my perspective, I have textured wired turned on so you can see the cut. And to use a tool, you just simply click and drag across. Then you can hit the, the space bar and you'll see that it cuts across the entire cube. So anytime you use the knife tool, it cuts all the way across. And that's very important. And the reason I say it's important is because if I hit the tab key, Notice how that firms it up a little bit. Um, and that works pretty nicely. So that if I choose to use sub patches or meta nerves later on, and I'm going to plan on continuing with organic modeling, the knife tool would probably be your tool of choice to selectively um, add geometry. That would be one of the ways. Now, if I use the slice tool, on the other hand, that could be a little bit different. I'm going to switch to um, edge and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here and click here and wait a minute where am I going here Hit slice no 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 uh, let me deselect that let me zoom in a little bit why aren't you working 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to Polygon. I had it working a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna click again, slice. There we go. So you don't want anything selected at the moment, but now if I click here on this edge and then I click down here, notice on that edge, now I've sliced it. I turn off the slice tool, but notice in the, the perspective view under textured that um, it only sliced that one polygon and that was it. It doesn't slice, it might, it may have sliced the one in the back. Nope, it didn't. It only sliced that one. So if I plan on using sub patches later on, that could be a problem. It, it, it is if I planned on just hitting the tab key like so. Now I have um, Cat and Mole Clark turned on, so that's why that worked. But if I just have sub patches turned on instead, watch what happens. I'm going to get an error message and I click and notice that it's just not working. Okay. Hit tab again. I get an error message. It brings it back to the way it was. But if I switch down below to Cat and Mole Clark, then it will work, which is a different type of sub patch. And notice it changes the, the configuration of our cube significantly. And again, if I go back and I remove all of that, and if I hit switch from Cat and Will Clark back to sub patch and I hit the tab key, notice that it's uniformly kind of like a ball shape. But as soon as you add that geometry, it stiffens it up. So, you know, if I wanted to come in here and I wanted to stiffen up the top or the bottom, I could use the knife tool. That would probably be the best choice. And I could click and drag like across like so. Pull down the control key to make sure that it's horizontal. Tab like so, and I don't want that. So see, that's not working right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, there we go. Let's make sure that this went all the way across and it did. Let's hit tab key again. <clears throat> and why I'm getting an error message is because it probably is from before. So let's go all the way back make sure that I get rid of that, um, that slice that I put in there. So let me try again. Let's go ahead and use the knife tool and let me cut it across here like so. Pull down the control key, make sure that it's horizontal. Now I'm going to hit the tab key. There we go. Notice how it stiffened up the top. And if I want, if I want to stif stiffen that up even more, if I select the edge selection mode here and I click here and I go ahead and I say select um, loop and then I hit T for move and I move it up a little bit. Notice how it makes the top edge even more. It stiffens it up even more, probably a little bit too much. Okay, and I can pull that down a little bit. So that's probably all that we need. If you push it up too far, you know, you'll see the problem that you have. Now, what I could also do with the top polygon is I could add geometry to it as well. And that would take some of these facets away from here. But anyway, that's um, slice versus knife. Okay, so let me undo a couple times. Let's take us back. Um, subdivide, we ha I've shown you that before when we started the reboot character, but that will, uh, remember if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So if I select subdivide, it's gonna give me an option here. And I'm just gonna select faceted, not smooth or metaform, and I click, and you can see that it uniformly has subdivided and taken six polygons and now broken it down into uh, what, four times six or 24. And if I were to subdivide again, it, does, it just uniformly um, cuts it in half. So now again, if I hit the tab key, notice that I get you know, a uniformly rounded corners here. Okay, it stiffens it up from that ball that we had initially to something that's a, you know, a little bit more defined. 
Okay, so that's subdivide. So that's, you know, most of them look pretty good here. So I'm going to move on. There's more of these to do, but these are the ones that I probably use the most. Um, but the next thing that I want to show you is under the construct tab. And so what we want to do here is we're going to use the Boolean features. Now Boolean over to the left under combine is grayed out because in order to use the Boolean, um, you, Boolean features, you need two objects to work with. And I don't have two objects at the moment. Now, Boolean also requires that the objects be on separate layers. Speed Boolean, they will be on the same layer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer here and put that one in the background. Uh, I already have one here. So let's go ahead and do that one then. So let's select this cube and let's select this sphere. Okay, so I have a sphere in the background and I have a cube in the foreground. I'm gonna put the sphere in the foreground and I'm gonna put the cube in the background and I'm gonna offset them just a little bit. So I'm gonna hit T for move and I'm gonna switch to polygon mode and I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna move, whoops, come on. T for move, let's move this over here like so. So you can see that the sphere overlaps the cube. And I probably should make the sphere a little bit larger. I don't have to, but it might not be a bad idea. Just a little bit like so. That was shift H to make it a little larger. Okay, so I have the sphere definitely overlapping the cube. Now, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to add these together? Do you want to subtract the cube from the sphere? Or do you want to subtract the sphere from the cube? Okay. Um, or do you want the difference between the two? You know, where do you want where they overlap? Do you want those to remain? So those are our choices, and that's what we have now that Boolean is available here. So I'm going to go ahead and just for starters, I'll go ahead and I'll leave the sphere in the foreground. And the Boolean operation, um, the cutter will be in the background. So I have one in the foreground, one in the background. So now when I select Boolean, it's going to ask me what I want to do. Do I want to join them together? Do I want to subtract? Do I want to intersect or do I want to add them together? And there's a difference between union and add. So let's say I want to subtract and I click. Now, when I look at the sphere, you can see that it's been cut away. Okay. That cube cut away. Now that works okay. However, um, again, a word of caution that if you later on choose to use sub patches or meta nerves, it will not be possible. It would be something that you would have to do afterwards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit tab again to show you what happens. And I get an error message. And look at, you know, almost nothing works here. It doesn't, you know, I get some error message. I'll hit tab again and we'll go back and it just goes back to nothing. Let's try Captain McClark and see what we get. <clears throat> and that rounds some of it off and it looks okay on the inside. It's rounded, but it really doesn't give me any advantage at all. Okay, so just a word of caution that later on, if you do choose to use or you want to use sub patches or meta nerves, do not use any of the Boolean functions. Okay, you can, and I will show you that in a little bit, if we have time today, um, because what you would have to do is that you would have to freeze this. And then once it's frozen, then you could use the Boolean function or you would use sub, sub patches first, and then you would use the Boolean function afterwards. Once it has sub patches, then I could freeze it and then I could um, use the Boolean functions you know, as an afterthought. Let me um, undo this a few times and let's come back again and let's do it the other way. 
So I'm going to put the, um, the cube in the foreground. And I'm going to put the sphere in the background. Okay. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select Boolean and I'm going to select subtract. And you can see that the sphere now has been the cutter and it's cut out the, you know, that portion of that sphere that overlapped away from the, the cube. Okay. And that can work, um, you know, for certain certain types of modeling. This is kind of old school for subtracting and adding. It can work really, really well. Okay, so let's undo that. Let's try another one. So I'm going to go ahead and put the sphere in the background again. Let's say I wanted to join these together. Okay, I wanted this to be one object. I didn't, I don't want simply um, a sphere and a cube separate, but I want them to be one entity. Well, I can do that with the Boolean function. I'm going to go ahead and Boolean. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select Union. And I click like so. And you can see that they are together. However, um, it just looks like they're overlapped. And in fact, they are just sort of overlapped. But if you look in the wireframe, you can see that the remainder of that cube is gone. Okay, We have part of the sphere that's, that's there. But what I want to do now is to truly do them to show you that they're not joined together in the true sense is that if I have polygons selected and I select a few polygons and I say select connected, uh, select connected, notice that just the sphere is selected and that's it, not the, the cube. I want them to be joined together. And the same would be true if I selected the cube. So I'll go ahead and I'll deselect. So the next step that you have to remember to do when you do this, if you want them truly joined together, is to hit M for merge. Okay, and I'll just select automatic. It's going to keep one point polygons and it's going to merge them together. So you can see at the bottom, 34 points have been eliminated. Now when I select a few polygons and I say select connected, notice that everything now is connected together. It is a single unit. Okay. So that's another thing that you can do with this. So let's undo a few times. Let's go back. Okay. So we're going back here. Let's deselect. Um, Let me go ahead and move a little bit. So we do this again. I'm going to hit T for move. Move this over like so. And let's say I wanted um, the difference between the two. Okay. I just wanted sort of a pie shape um, left. So now what I can do, again, what won't matter which is in the foreground or which is in the background, but if I select Boolean again, and I select intersect this time. And now I go ahead and I click OK. You can see that what's left is just the part that over, is overlap, that, that was overlapped, which is just a wedge of the, the sphere. Is that the best way to do that? No, but it just gives you an idea of what's left. Now, the reason that the sub patches won't work anymore is that sub patches um, use a three or four point polygon. And when you use the, uh, the Boolean function, it creates n gons, which are polygons that exceed that four point limit. Now, sometimes Catmull Clark will, will work for you, but I don't know that that's the wisest way to go. So if you do plan on doing organic modeling, try to keep it to a four poly um, mesh, okay? Now, let me also show you the difference between <coughs> the, um, let's put that in the background. And I want to show you the difference between union and add. So now when I add these two together, okay, 
it actually leaves the sphere inside. That doesn't go away. Okay. Now, before when I did this, um, it was actually the it, 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 when you use um, combine, it, it removes the interior part of that element, and that's totally gone. So now, if I were to from the top view here, if we were to look at this in wireframe. Okay, you can see that that sphere is still there. So if you want to combine the two, but you want to leave the interior portion of whatever overlaps, then you would use add instead. Okay. So um, what would be the next option for us? Now, the advantage to using Boolean is that, let's go ahead and hit T for move. Let's move this again, like so. Is that when we're done with the operation, it leaves the cutter intact on its own layer. But instead, if you wanted to use speed Boolean, what you could do <coughs> is that, um, or speed Boolean that you, and you didn't want that part that overlapped um, to, to exist anymore, then speed Boolean would be your choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and overlap them like so. Okay, but now I have to put them on the same layer. So I'm gonna take the back one that's in the background and I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna go back to the foreground and I'm going to paste it. So now both the cube and the sphere are on the same layer. So now you have to decide if you're gonna cut, if you're gonna join them together or whatever, what do you wanna do? <clears throat> so let's say again, I wanted the sphere to be the cutter. So I need to select some of that first. So um, I'm gonna select polygon. I'm gonna select a few polygons here. And I'll say select connected. Now this indicates that this will be the cutter. And now I can use speed Boolean. Now when I select speed Boolean, you can see that I have the same options here. Union, subtract, intersect, add. Okay, so if I go ahead and I select subtract, you can see that it's been removed now. Okay, and if I go back to um, from wireframe to texture, you can see what's going on here. But you'll notice that the sphere that I had used to cut that away is totally eliminated. It's gone. So that's what happens with the speed boolean. Okie doke. So that's what happens here. Now, some of the things that we can do, um, some of the other things that we can do in here are as follows. Um, let's see, let me undo this. And I'm gonna undo that again. So that's on its own layer. Now, when this can be really useful is, you know, if you wanna poke holes in objects and things like that. Um, so for example, if I'm creating some sort of form and I want to actually poke a hole in it. So for example, if I go to, um, uh, let's go to a new layer. I'm going to cut this or copy this and I'm going to go, because I already have a bunch of layers anyway. And I'm going to go to here and I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to add, put this in the background. So let's go ahead and under create, I'm going to take a disc and I want to cut a hole, but I don't want, I mean, if you want the hole to go all the way through, then you have to do as follows, okay? I'm going to have to make sure that that cylinder, okay, goes all the way through my object. If I want this centered up, then that's what I need to do, okay? So, since I want the hole to go all the way through this, the, the cube, I need to be the, the cube to be in the foreground, the cylinder to be in the background. And I'll go ahead and I'll use boole the Boolean function again under construct. Boolean here, and I want it to subtract. 
And if I click, you can see that it cuts all the way through. So this would be a more practical use of Boolean. Okay. And you'll notice how it takes in that top polygon here, if I switch from texture to texture wired, um, you can see that in the top here, that it's added this extra geometry here. I mean, I can't get rid of that in order for that to work. Now, there's another nifty tool that we can use. So let me show you that. Um, I'm going to go to this one here. Another way to join objects together um, is really pretty cool. And they don't have to be two spheres. So we can try this again. And we can do a, something a little bit differently. But you'll notice the spheres, I cut away um, some of the, the polygons at the top and the bottom. And then I went ahead and I made a face of each of these. So now if I go ahead and I, um, let's see, let's turn, I don't want to move. If I select this polygon now, and I select this bottom polygon, and I want to join them together, what I can do is I can use the bridge tool. And when I do that, you'll notice that it joins them together. Okay. Now, how, what that looks like when I use sub patch is like, so wait a minute, let me turn that back off. Let's deselect that. Now I'm going to hit sub patch and I get this little kind of weird shape here, but they are joined together beautifully. So to get two, you know, spheres to join together like that, um, that's very doable. Now it might look a little bit differently. Let's go back a couple of steps. And let's bring them closer together. So if I hit, um, let's go ahead and before I select those two, that might be helpful if I would, would have um, brought them together a little bit. So, because if I hit T for move, it's just going to move the ones that are selected. So I'm going to deselect. Let's go ahead and hit T from, uh, let's make sure that one is selected here. I don't want to move that. Let's go ahead and select this one. Say select connected. And let's hit T for move. And let's get them really close together. Now, what I could do instead, okay, so let's T for move. Let's see if I can do this without too much muss or fuss. So I'm going to select these polygons here. And so what I have to do is I'm going to, if I click on the top here, let's see what I, I don't want that selected. That doesn't work for me. So what I need to do, maybe I do have to move them apart a little bit. So that would, yeah. So, yeah, that will work for me. If I hit T for move, I move it a little bit closer together. And then when I'm done, I might have to get those done. Now, what I could do is I could join them together using the, um, the weld tool. That would be a possibility. Um, I could join these together using the Boolean function. Um, but I want to try something a little bit different here. Let's, let's deselect. So let's see if I can select those two again. So I select this polygon. And the reason I cut them away is that in order to use the bridge tool, similar to when we were welding the foot to the leg of um, uh, uh, a reboot character, is that you need the same number of points to do that. And they don't have to be the same shape. So again, if I, <clears throat> if I come down here and I use under general, or I use bridge under construct, there we go. And now I can deselect and let's see what happens now. Um, hit tab. There you go. So I don't get, I mean, it's a little bit, that works a little bit better. So now if I wanted to, I could select these polygons and say select loop. And I could, you know, scrunch it a little bit closer together. 
Okay. So that's how that works. Now, as I said, you don't have to have um, uh, two spheres connected together. So let me undo those. And I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to take this sphere. And I'm going to say select connected. And I'm just going to get rid of it. Command X. And now along the top here, I'm going to go ahead. Let's move this up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a box. But remember, I have a total of 24 points here. So if I were thinking ahead, maybe I should do that. Let's go ahead and let's just get rid of this sphere too. And I'll make another sphere because that's a lot of points to, to join together. So uh, let's make a ball again. So I'm going to go ahead and action, reset, activate. Okay. But the number of sides, instead of 24, I'm going to use eight. Okay. Just to reduce the number. Okay. And again, I'm going to get rid of some of the top polygons here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and drag to highlight those polygons. Uh, come on. Having trouble controlling my mouse here. There we go. So let's go ahead and kill those. Command X. Switch to point view. And I'm going to right click and drag across there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit P for poly to join that together. Okay, so now I have eight points along the top. So now what I can do is I can create a, a cube. So let's go ahead and create a box like so. And let's zoom out from the top view a little bit. And remember, we have, we have four points at the moment. But I want to join these together. So what I can do is under segments, I can go ahead and I can add we can go ahead and just subdivide to, to, and let's just go ahead and do two for the heck of it. Okay. Everybody following along okay? So let's go ahead and fix that. Now let's take these bottom polys and let's go ahead and um, I said we needed eight points, and we do. So I'm going to select these polygons here, and I'm going to um, smooth it out. So instead of point view, select the polygon. Let's select these, these polygons. I've got to deselect that one. And now what I can do is under detail, what I want to do is I want to um, I want to merge polys. So now I just have one polygon in the bottom, but it has eight points. So with that polygon selected, and now I select this polygon down here by holding down the shift key. Now I'll go ahead and under construct, I'm going to go ahead and select bridge again. And notice that it joins them together. Okay. Now I can deselect the polygons and then let's hit tab and see what I have. Okay. So you can, this is if you want to, you know, work organically, you can, that that's a legitimate way to work. If I don't hit the tab key and you go back and still you have one object that's been joined together. So that works pretty nicely. Okay, so we have some other options here. <clears throat> Under um, construct and what we're going to do is the Boolean function is that we have solid drill and drill. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of all of this. 
And I'm going to, and again, it's similar to the original Boolean function that I showed you um, in that uh, we need two layers to do this. So select this layer. Uh, let's get rid of some of these. Otherwise, it's just confusing me. Um, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a sphere. It doesn't, it can be any, any form that you want. So under create, we'll make a ball. And I'm going to reset. And I'm going to activate. There we go. Now, if I want to poke a hole through this, or drill, as it were, a hole through this, what I could do on another layer, this would be another way of doing this. So I'm going to create a new layer, put this one in the background for positioning, is that I'm going to use a two-dimensional um, shape. So I'm going to use the disk tool. And I'm going to click and drag like so. Okay. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to reduce the number of sides. And I'm going to make my kind of star-like shape in a minute like I did the other day. Okay, so we've done that. And I'm going to switch to points. And I'm going to select every other point. So, whoops, I didn't want to do that. There we go. And now I'm going to resize it, bring those points in like so, to make my star shape. H, shift H, and then deselect. Now I need to hit T for move to move this out in front. So, I have a two dimensional shape, star shape, and I have a three dimensional form, which is the sphere. And because the shape is for the drill tool is going to be the cutter, I need to put it in the background. So you can see in perspective view that here's my star shape and here's my sphere in the foreground. And now under construct, I can go ahead and I can use um, drill. And it gives me some options here. Now, when you use drill, they can only be along the X, Y, or Z axis. So that's really important. So you have to have a sense of your, your location and space. Because the, the star is <clears throat> directly in front of the sphere, it's going to drill along the Z axis. So you have to decide, you want to core, like coring an apple, you want to create a tunnel, you want to use a stencil, which can be very useful, or a slice. I'm going to start and just go down the row with these. So I'm going to start with core, and I click like so. And it's just that, it's like coring an apple. It leaves you the outside polys where that star exists and that's it. Now, if you want to join these two together, we could do that. We could do that in a number of ways. And one that we've already done is that if you wanted to pick point by point, <clears throat> we could go ahead and um, uh, weld all of that together. That, I don't know if that would be the best way to do that, but you know, that's one option for you. So let's undo that. Let's go back. And now let's try that again. Let's go drill. Now let's create tunnel. Now, if I select tunnel, it creates and it pokes a hole. Now, when you do that, it goes all the way through. Okay. Now, it looks like, there we go. It looks like it didn't, it left this poly right here. That's kind of weird. But typically with a drill, it goes all the way through and that's unavoidable. Now, if I wanted to see the inside of my sphere, I could create a, a two-sided poly. And that could be done under with a, <clears throat> a surface editor if I wanted to. So if I could go with default here. So let's just go ahead and let's close that for a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Q. Oh, come on. Q. And let's make um, this, you know, name a ball. 
and I don't want it to be default. Just leave it the same color. But now I'll go under the surface editor and with the ball selected, um, I can make it double sided and I can turn on smoothing. And now you can see the inside of the sphere. And if you wanted to remember the other day, if we wanted to give thickness to this, we could use the thicken tool. And that would be pretty cool. Okay, so that's another function of the drill tool. So if we go back, now let's try another one. So I'm going to use the drill tool again. And let's use stencil. Stencil is pretty interesting because what we can do is we can create a separate surface for that. And this is a, a useful way of mapping text or objects on your tool. So let's say for your toy, you're doing um, an intricate ball and you want to put the logo of the manufacturer on the side of the ball. Now you could use a projection map. If you want um, to actually make the, the, the logo a permanent um, part of that, that object, you could. And there is a, there is, there's a reason for that, that, um, that if you wanted it to be in relief, that um, that would be difficult to do. You could do that with a bump map, but maybe that's what we're going to do here, but a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to name the surface star. Okay, and I click OK. And you'll notice that if I just look at the foreground here, that that star is now stenciled onto the ball. And remember, with a drill tool, it goes all the way through. Okay. Now, why is this useful? Because I can select these polygons if I want, and I can use the surface editor, and we have the star, and let's change the color of it. For example, let's make it a nice bright red color here. There we go. Okay. Now, what if I wanted that extruded from my, um, my object? Well, with polygons selected, I could select these polys like so. I'm holding down the shift key and making sure I just select the polys for, whoops, I don't want that selected for the star. And now using the, one of the tools that we used the other day um, to add geometry, I would come over to multiply and I could use smooth shift. And if I click like so, I added it and now I can hit T for move and maybe from the top view, I could pull that out. So this would be a good reason for using the stencil, that function. And it leaves the other intact. Remember, I could, if I don't want to see the star on the other side, I could very well select the polys and change the surface, and you would never know the difference that that was there. So now I can go ahead and I can um, deselect. So let's go ahead and that. Let's just look at the, the textured view. So that would be a way of doing that. And notice that the star wraps around, because I used that stencil feature, that it wraps around the sphere perfectly. It looks like it's perfectly joined. And it's only on one side there. So that works pretty nicely. So I think we have time for, for one more feature. Um, instead of um, drill, we're going to use solid drill. And solid drill is very similar to drill, but um, instead of a two-dimensional form, we need a three-dimensional shape. or Instead of a two-dimensional shape, we need a three-dimensional form. So I'm going to undo a few times. I'm going to select the star, and now I'm going to turn it into a three-dimensional form. And we used that tool the other day. We used extrude. So I'm just going to click and drag and pull that out like so. Okay, make it nice and, and long if I need to stretch it, I can. So I'm going to go ahead from here and put this in the background. 
Now, you'll notice that what I've done before, this needs to be stretched out a little bit, so a little bit more. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to hit H for stretch, control, and let's just stretch that out. So it definitely extends way beyond the sphere. Now, before with the when we use the drill tool, it can only be along the X, Y, or Z axis. That's not true for the solid drill. The solid drill can be in any direction. So I can take the star shape here and I can rotate it. Let's rotate it from the top and then let's rotate it from the side like so. Just to show you that it can be in any direction. And I'll go ahead and I'll put it in the background. And so now, if I want to core it or I want to, you know, use any one of those, now I use um, the solid drill. So under construct, I use solid drill. And let's go ahead and let's tunnel. And click OK. And there, we're not restricted to the X, Y, or Z axis. OK, and as I said before, you know, if you wanted to give this dimension, like you're using a hel helmet or something like that, we could go back over to multiply and I could select thicken. Okay. And we could go out or in. We could give it thickness. So it actually looks, you know, a little bit more solid. So that gives us some options here. Okay. But as I said, you can't use, now that we have n-gons, um, I can't, I, mean, I could try, well, with Cat Mole Clark, let's try that and see what we have. Yeah, it doesn't look so hot. Okay. So if I wanted to smooth the edges, I could use the rounder tool for that. If I wanted to eliminate the, the polygons here, Again, you know, the seeing these these um, these polys, not eliminate the polys, but so that I can smooth it out a little bit, I would have to um, hit Q for surface. And let's go ahead and um, create a new one here. I'll just call it ball. And let's make it red. Okay. And why isn't it changing the color of that? So let's go back to the surface editor. Oh, I thought I changed the color of it, and I guess I didn't. There we go. There we go. Okay. But in order for that the ball to look smooth, you know, a little bit more smooth, I can turn on smoothing down here. And that, but now. Yeah, see, that doesn't look so hot. So now I get these error messages. So that's not such a hot way to go. Now, am I still have Cat Mo Clark turned on? So I do. So let's go back. Let's um, hit tab. Let's turn off Cat Mo Clark. Let's go to sub patch. And yeah, it won't work. It won't work for us. So even smoothing doesn't look all that good. Let me undo that a couple of times as I'm messing this thing up. There we go. So let me try smoothing again. That sub patch turned on and see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't look so hot. So we would have to work on ways of fixing that. And that's beyond the time that we have for today. That just looks really horrible. So I'd have to think of a different way of doing that. Um, I could have added more geometry to the sphere, and that would have eliminated that problem instead of leaving it to the default. Um, and that would be an option. So before we leave today, do you guys have any questions for me? 
So we covered more of the multiply tools. We covered some of the, the Boolean functions, Boolean, state Boolean, and we also covered bridge. Um, oh, there is one that I didn't cover, connect. Um, so I have time for that. Let's go back. Let's go back to the here. So again, it's just different ways of, of subdividing polygons. But in this particular instance, I'm going to select um, the edge tool. I'm going to select this edge, hold down the shift key, select this edge. Come on. There we go. Now let's select connect. And that subdivides that those two. Um, okay. But again, you have to be careful because if I hit the tab key, I get an error message because I have n-gons. So let me deselect that. Let's try again. Tab key. Yeah. So I'd have to use cat mole Clark in this particular instance. And you really don't see much of a difference. It's still pretty round. So that probably wouldn't be our best choice to do it that way. So it really depends on what you're building. But anyway, that's another tool for us that I had forgotten to show you. That's connect. So connect, you have to select two edges and then it, it connects it. Okie doke. So um, again, questions from any of you um, before we end today? Um, Okay, this is a, a question from Brenda, Brenda. So I know you worked on the reboot mic assignment, but I don't know Blender that well to make him just yet. Is it okay that I just turn in the donut assignment from the tutorials you put? Yes, that would be fine. Yep, Brenda, that would be perfect. Okay. And I might have everybody as an option for your final assignment do that that if you want to switch from LightWave to Blender, that you could do the, um, the donut assignment. And then for your final assignment, Brenda, you could do something different since you're using Blender. Does that answer your question? So I'm trying to give you guys options. As I said, I don't know Blender that well yet myself to feel comfortable teaching it. It's taken me a little bit of time. So if you, I made available in the Blender um, uh, list of videos on YouTube um, available by the um, Blender guru, the donut. So if you want to make the donut in there, it's, it's like four, 24 different um, lessons that he does. That would be fine by me. Okay. Anybody else? No? So we're just adding tools. Um, what I'm going to do next Monday is we're going to switch gears and instead of doing modeling, we're going to switch to surfacing. Um, as you're working on your toy assignment, hopefully. Um, Yeah, um, Juan asks, is it okay to do a chess piece for the toy assignment? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. And then for the final assignment, if you want to do an entire chess set, that's been done before and that could look really nice. Because we're gonna, you're going to have about half the semester to work on the um, your final assignment. And I'll continue to introduce new features and then we'll probably switch and watch some videos on um, YouTube and show you some features in Blender and also some organic modeling techniques and LightWave that are pretty interesting. Okay. So again, I just wanted to show you more 
modeling tools today that um, continue with multiply and work on the construct tab. Okay. So if there aren't any questions, um, I think I have everybody here who's participated today. Um, and that's it. You are free to leave and I will say goodbye from now, for now. Now I'm going to pause the, the recording and we'll, um, we'll make it available for you to review if you'd like um, on YouTube shortly thereafter. Hold on here. Oh no, yeah, you can do, uh, Monica, you can do a, a toy from Pixar, sure. But keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. I don't want it to be your, your final assignment. The, the, the focus of the next assignment for all of you will be on surfacing. So for example, if you, know, if you were to actually buy a toy at the 99 cent store, it could be a little wooden train or find one you know, online of a wooden train, or it could be a top, or it could be um, a chess piece, or it could be a die, you know, or um, you know, a paradise. Um, now that you know the Boolean tool, um, you could make a paradise quite easily. But the focus is going to be on the surfacing to make the surfacing look real. Yeah, it's important that you focus on the simplicity of it, because I don't want you to spend a whole bunch of time modeling it. I want you to spend most of the time um, surfacing it, and then we will cover lighting as well to make sure that when you're done, because surfacing and lighting can make a huge difference in, in how your model looks when you're done. Okay, and then in combination for your final assignment, then you will do a more complex model and focus on surfacing as well as lighting, all of those three aspects sort of really um, do something more complex and, and sophisticated. Okay. Um, look on, on my website for some of the examples that I have for toys, um, but some of those were done for final assignments as well, that they kind of up the ante a little bit. So that may not be fair. No, it, um, um, an answer to you, uh, anonymous attendee, um, it is not too late to turn in the reboot as, boot assignment. Yeah, no, you have until the end of the semester to turn it in. Just be in, in, in touch with me and let me know that you have so that I'll revisit your folder and make sure that I give you credit for it. Remember, the class now is supposed to be taught asynchronously and my deadlines, um, I think it's wise for you to try to meet those deadlines so that you'll have time to do, to dedicate, especially to the final assignment, um, the time that it, you'll need to really do it justice and to immerse yourself in that project. But um, yeah, no, you have the entire semester to do these, all of these projects. And if you want to redo any of them, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay. Okie doke. So again, we're done for today. Um, I'll see everybody Monday and I will show you how to do some more sophisticated servicing. Taking a simple cube with a ball inside and making transparent maps and bump maps and all sorts of things to really add dimension and complexity to a very simple model. It's just, it's sort of an example of where I'm asking you to go with the, um, the, the toy assignment. Okay. Okay, doke. So goodbye for now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop recording and then I'll hang, I'll stick around if anybody needs to, to talk. Okay. So I'm going to stop recording or pause.